On the right is a non-existent bus stop, on the left is a sign, stop. No passage allowed. Further on there was a barrier and a shield fire on sight. This is how the concrete road to the secret military facility, Chernobyl II, or ARC begins. Have you ever been to a Soviet military secret facility in the exclusion zone? One such facility is still standing. Now it is a monument not only to the Soviet Union, but also to the whole era of the arms race. Its second name is Russian Woodpecker. It is a huge antenna 150 meters high and 1 kilometer wide. The task it performed was to detect launches of intercontinental nuclear missiles that could theoretically be directed towards the then Soviet Union. When you are near it, you feel like you are just a bug in a post-apocalyptic place. Yeah, the overall look inspires respect. It's very cool. The century is probably one of the most famous and colorful. And here, mainly because of its scale, the radiation levels here are quite high. Compared to Pripyat, the radiation levels here are enormous. The antenna, by the way, consists of two parts. One is 150 meters high and a kilometer wide. There is an additional one, the Americans called it Russian Woodpecker, because it made a characteristic knocking sound in the radio air during the Soviet Union. And even after the Chernobyl accident, the facility remained top secret, despite its size. The antenna is built in such a way that it is not visible from any nearby road. There were a total of 32 such facilities in the Soviet Union. Others near the cities of Nikolaev and Komsomolsk on Amor were dismantled, while this facility has survived due to the fact that it is located in the exclusion zone. In the entire exclusion zone, any lifting work is prohibited. The antenna is deteriorating. It's scary to imagine what will happen if the 14,000-ton structure ever falls. The seismic wave would easily reach the sarcophagus and the reactor. In addition, a lot of radiation has settled in the ground, which will easily rise with the dust. Around the arc for a long time there was a large number of rumors. Americans sincerely believed that the radar station was a military psychotropic radiator that could brainwash anyone. This is one of the most unusual and large-scale objects near Chernobyl. Let's look into how the Duggar radar station came to be and what it actually did. Where might you have heard about the Dugga? The Dugga radar station has long been a cultural heritage site. It has often been glimpsed in various games, movies, and books. The most vivid example is the Stalker series of games and books. The antenna there is such a healthy Otgrovalovea Otgrovali, with the size of a five-story building. According to the words of the game character Lesnik, the antenna had a negative impact on the psyche of the inhabitants, because of the radiation, they were hard to contact strangers and fanatically extolled the Soviet government. This was the official position of the developers in the universe of the game. It was based on the very rumors that were spread by Americans. Continuing the stalker theme, the RLS was also shown in Chernobylite, an action game with survival elements. One of the story missions is tied to it, affecting the attitude towards the protagonist. The origin of ARK in this universe was not reported, but it was possible to subvert it. ARK also appeared in the recent Call of Duty Black Ops, Cold War. She made an appearance in one of the game's endings. In early 2021, a year after the release of the hype series Chernobyl, the BBC channel even released a small documentary devoted to the radar station. It tells about the appearance of the radar station and its impact on society. Among the rumors described in the picture, the possibility of destroying enemies with an electric pulse is mentioned. Of course, in reality, this is not the case. How did the Duggar radar system come into being? In response to the appearance in the United States of a plan to bomb Moscow, Leningrad, the Urals and other industrial areas in the USSR began to look for an adequate response. To avoid threats from outside, designer Vladislav Repin and academician Alexander Mintz proposed the creation of a missile early warning system, MUSE. It consisted of three elements to avoid false detection. Space-based, satellites detected flares from missile launches in the infrared range over the horizon, detected flares from missile launches in the radio range, ground-based radars such as Darial, tracked ballistic missiles as they approached the country's territory. The point is that a missile launched from the US took 20 minutes to reach the USSR, 
while the systems operating at the time could detect it only five minutes before it fell. SPRN could detect the missile three to four minutes after launch. Against the background of the threat from the US, it was decided to build three battle stations at once, one in Chernobyl, the second in Komsomolsk on Amor, and the third near Nikolaev. They covered the US territory, where 940 missiles with nuclear warheads aimed at the USSR were located. The location near Chernobyl was chosen for a reason. It wasn't that the radars required a huge amount of energy. It was not that the Chernobyl nuclear power plant was to be located nearby to power it. It's the time of day. In the ionosphere there is a so-called polar cap interfering with the passage of radio waves, when the daytime in Chernobyl the probability of detection was maximum, at night in the Far East it became minimal, and vice versa. In 1982, the Douglas stations were put into operation. The station includes two huge antennas, receiving and transmitting. The 5N32 Dugger radar station located in Chernobyl had the following characteristics, receiving antenna height, 135 meters. Receiving antenna width, 300 meters. Height of the transmitting antenna, 210 meters. Transmit antenna width, 85 meters. Transmitter consumption, 1.5 megawatts. Consumption of the station itself, 500 kilowatts. In addition to these antennas, the stationary radar station complex includes 26 transmitters, each of which is almost as big as a two-story house. The transmitters were manufactured, installed and commissioned by the Dnepropetrovsk machine building plant. All works were carried out in a high danger zone. Inside the huge two-story transmitter, the operating voltages were from 6 to 40 kV. The secret documents noted the incredible power of the radar work. Among the examples that were mentioned, if a metal wire was inserted into a watermelon, there were state farm fields around the station, where agricultural products were grown for the whole union, this berry began to work as a receiver. In fact, the structure was capable of tracking targets that were up to 3,000 kilometers away. With the help of these radars, the military could literally look beyond the horizon. The radar operated on frequencies of 3.26 to 17.54 MHz, and this caused inaccurate work by naval military and civilian vessels in Europe. Dugga was only a receiver, and the transmitter was built 60 kilometers away at a place called Lyabek 1, it is already an abandoned military town in Ukraine. Top secret facilities were under tight security. To confuse the enemy, Soviet commanders often labeled such sites with numbers or objects that did not correspond to reality. On Soviet maps, Dugga was labeled as a children's camp. They even built a bus stop near the radar, decorated with a bear, the symbol of the 1980 Moscow Olympics. So, Philip Donahue, an American journalist, who was one of the first who managed to get to Chernobyl after the accident, tried to find out more about the radar station from the official escort, because there was no way to hide it. To all questions about the structure, he was told that it was an unfinished hotel. The USSR denied any existence of radar. In 1976, the world heard for the first time a repeating pulse sent out by a transmitter in test mode. Listen for yourself. It was called woodpecker because it was very similar to the crackle of bird activity. The use of the arc was abandoned because of the Chernobyl accident. To put the modernized radar on combat duty was prevented by the accident at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, which occurred on April 26, 1986. Large-scale runs of the radar were never completed. Initially, the station was mothballed, but later it became clear that at the existing radiation level it would not be possible to put it back into operation. For this reason, it was decided to dismantle the main radioelectronic units of the ZGRLS and take them to the Far East. What was not removed by the official services was later looted by looters. Now it is just an object of national heritage. Thus ended the history of the world's first ultra-long-range over-the-horizon radars. Today it is commonly believed that the reason for the project's failure was a very bold idea that was difficult to realize with the technology of those years. 
Perhaps, by the early 1990s, it would have been possible to bring the Dugga to perfection, especially since the modernization work was carried out very intensively. The total cost of the program was about 600 million rubles, of which about 150 million rubles was spent on the construction of Chernobyl II. For comparison, in the mid-1980s, the cost of one Project 949 and nuclear attack submarine, on which the Kursk was built, was 226 million rubles.